Here's why I think AI is not in a bubble. A lot of people balk at the price point of $500 billion for OpenAI and nearly $200 billion for Anthropic NXAI, but valuation alone doesn't give us a full picture on why we are in an AI bubble. The first indicator that we go to is revenue, and OpenAI is barely bringing in $15 billion and much less for Anthropic NXAI. There seems to be a huge disconnect between the revenue that they're bringing in and the crazy valuation that these companies are getting from venture capitals. But unlike more recent bubbles that we've seen, like the dot-com bubble and subprime mortgage in the 2000s, funding in pure play AI is mostly done by venture capitals and private investors. And they know that when they're investing into these companies, more than half their money is going to go straight towards building out multi-gigawatts of training centers and data centers that will take years to finish, let alone get their money back as an investor. In other words, there's no external lever that will force them to sell their position since most of the funding is made as an exchange for equity as a shareholder rather than debt, fully knowing that these AI frontier companies are making a huge bet when it comes to building out and expanding their infrastructure. And that's the critical point. Frontier labs like OpenAI are making a huge bet, no doubt about it. And the bet is that intelligence is going to get better and better. And the price to pay at each level of intelligence that we unlock is going to be loosely bound by the scaling law to some extent, which means to go from, let's say, a high school level intelligence to a PhD level intelligence, we're going to need more compute. And if we project that out more into someone who has been in the industry for 20 years, let's say, we're going to need a lot more compute to actually support that level of intelligence. Now, to steelman this argument, we're seeing a lot of Chinese frontier labs essentially producing more intelligence with a lower cost. And we're also seeing some experts in the AI industry saying that LLMs have reached their limit and the path to AGI is not through LLM at all, which is why all of this infrastructure build out is a huge bet that they're making. And the thing is, not playing the game could potentially have a bigger downside than the risk of over-provisioning infrastructure. In other words, in fear of AI bubble, would we rather be in a position to under-provision our infrastructure or we over-provision our infrastructure, but intelligence gets better and better? Personally speaking, I think AI has already proven itself that much. And I think people are getting impatient because AI innovation tends to move in bursts of energy rather than incremental steps. So putting an artificial limit to artificial intelligence seems to be just as speculative than the other way around. And that's not to say that the circulatory revenue that seems to be going on between AI companies are the best foundation to build our industry on. I think we can do a lot better than that, especially when we look at situations like NVIDIA buying out unused compute from CoreWeave, which then allows CoreWeave to bring in more debt to expand their operation more because they have more secured revenue coming in. And I think Neo Clouds in general are in a precarious situation. And we also have situations like Microsoft offering investments to OpenAI where half of that is Azure credits, which then OpenAI uses that and Microsoft could claim it as a revenue. Yeah, I think all of that could definitely be done differently. But broadly speaking, these gray areas aren't cause for industry-wide bubble concern. Another important part when it comes to the discussion on AI bubble is CapEx. In other words, someone has to pay the price in building out this infrastructure. At the end of the day, some company needs to eat up the costs and risk their balance sheet looking more red because spending tens of billions of dollars will show up as a capital expenditure. And we know that OpenAI can't front these deals because they don't have any money. So they need to court rich friends like Oracle and SoftBank to fund these operations and let them take the CapEx risk. In other words, unlike Mac 5 companies that have huge cash reserves and cash flows from their operation and can secure their own supply chain, Pure Play Frontier Labs cannot. They just don't have the same amount of access to capital and their balance sheet can't take that level of CapEx. And even Microsoft didn't want to take on that CapEx risk because they're not an AI innovator like OpenAI, which means that even if they risk their CapEx to the tune of multi-billion dollars to scale their hyperscaler for OpenAI, they have to bank on OpenAI to last as a company and also bank on OpenAI to use their services after spending billions and billions of dollars in their hyperscaler. Which is why Microsoft let OpenAI shop elsewhere for compute outside of Azure in exchange for $250 billion guarantee spend on Azure, which is crazy. But for Mac 5 companies like Google and Meta, spending CapEx here is an easier choice since they not only have huge cash positions to invest into building out their hyperscalers, but they also innovate their own models, unlike Microsoft, who would need to rely on Frontier Labs to use their services. So OpenAI is in an extremely unique position 
where they even received a deal from Nvidia themselves by getting $100 billion over time to build out 10 gigawatts of compute in late September this year, which in turn secures their own revenue and reliance on using Nvidia as opposed to building their own chip which is what Google and Amazon does. So now we get to address the elephant in the room, which is Nvidia's $5 trillion valuation. While we have mega tech companies spending multi-billion dollars in CapEx to build huge hyperscalers and frontier labs like OpenAI, Anthropic, and XAI, everything comes back to Nvidia. Nvidia has been the king of the GPU supply chain. While companies like Amazon and Google are transitioning off of them, and AMD is slowly catching up with their own MI450 chips that's supposed to come soon, and Nvidia is desperately trying to get their customers high in their own supply by investing into them to build out more infrastructure to use their own chips and be reliant on their own chips. And this is a different level of question because spending huge capex to build out infrastructure doesn't always guarantee that demand will always go to Nvidia chips being the only game in the town forever. And while I really can't say much about how all of this will play out, the common element is this. Will intelligence get better or stay the same? Because the entire system is betting on that it will. And the conundrum is the risk of under-provisioning could be higher than the risk of over-provisioning if intelligence truly does get better. Okay, so how does all of this have to do with AI bubble? And my point is this. I don't think what we're seeing is unreasonable and speculative bubble, but rather we're making a huge bet that first, intelligence is going to get better and better regardless of what some of the skepticism say, and second, the higher forms of intelligence is going to need a lot more compute going forward. And if any of those two things aren't true, we are probably in for a huge crash with an over-provisioned infrastructure. So to me, the question is, as the cost of intelligence is dropping, are we going the wrong way in over-provisioning infrastructure? Or is that the right way regardless? Because if the cost of intelligence truly is dropping, the demand for intelligence will then pick up even more. Is artificial intelligence truly capped as some people say it is, or are we just at the first page when it comes to AI innovation? 